What's good you guys, it's Lifestyle from LifestyleDidit.com and in today's video we're going to be going over compression on drums, what the components on the compressor do for drums, attack, release, how to set the threshold. We're going to go over everything today. Let's get into it. If you guys haven't seen the video where I go over compression and really break it down, it's on my channel. Just type in Lifestyle Did It Compression and you'll see that I break down exactly how a compressor works. So watch that one first. I'm going to kind of graze over some of the things. We are going to go over a lot of it, but if you really want to know exactly how a compressor works, check that video out. But in today, I brought this beat up, for example. I disabled everything on the master. And the first thing I wanna go over is kick drums. And I wanna make it real simple and kinda of show you ways that you could set the compressor to affect the kick drum differently. Whether that's a fast attack or a slow release or vice versa, what it does, and I'm going to render them and show you the actual waveform so you can see what's going on. So if I go into Edison right now and I just record this kick. Let me solo it right here so we're only listening to the kick. So this was just recorded, right? This is the waveform of the kick we have right now. Obviously, you could see there's a transient right here. This would be about the highest peak of the transient, but for the most part, this kick level is the same. And it was designed to be that way. I wanted it to punch through the entire time, and I kind of, you know, pushed it into a clipper, a little bit of clipping, a little bit of limiting to give it this sound that you see that the kick produces by itself, right? It's pretty consistent here, and then it dies off here, and that's what gives it that big fat effect when it hits. So this is giving us a reading that the kick is hitting around negative 5.2 dB, right? If our threshold is not even pulled down to negative 5.2 or lower, we are not even going to be affecting the kick because we're not hitting the threshold. The kick's hitting here and the threshold is way up here. We need to start to bring it down to where it's noticing the kick and what's happening with the kick, right? Once we bring our threshold down, the next thing that happens is the compressor wants to know how fast do you want to attack the transient and how fast do you want to let go when I grab that transient. So let's say the kick goes right and we bring that threshold down and now our kick goes over the threshold by 2 dB or something, right? It's going to start to want to compress it and it's going to pretty much ask us, okay, once it goes over this threshold, do you want me to kind of wait to grab the transient or do you want me to grab it right away? And once I grab it, how fast do you want me to let that go? Now, if we think in terms of that kick waveform that I showed you, if we want it to have more transient, right? We want to have more spike in the beginning and drop off fast. What do we need to do? We need to have a slow attack and a fast release. Now, what that's going to do is let some of that kick come through actually and then compress but not hold too long and what that's going to do is slope it down and create a higher transient right now if we wanted it to be how it is or we want it to be even more drastic where the waveform is kind of long and squared off we're going to do a slow attack to grab it immediately and we're going to hold it for a long time so when we bring the game back up now we have a longer waveform of consistent volume because it's holding down that transient right and as long as we're over the threshold the release is going to hold it down so once we bring it up in volume after it will be a longer sustained kick let me show you guys what i'm talking about now i want to show you so you could hear what's happening so if we go ahead and we over exaggerate this ratio right and we over exaggerate the threshold the compression is going to sound really nasty but now we can really hear what's going on so now that it's set like this if i go over to the attack and i bring it to the right to make it a slower attack listen to the transient watch when i go to the right watch it's going to open up the kick's going to have more attack so far right far left you hear the difference right now let's go with the release longer release shorter release so you can over exaggerate like that just to train your ear so you know what to listen for so i'm gonna gonna back this off a bit i'm gonna go back to the kind of the settings we had all right so the first one i want to show you is if we did a short attack and a long release and i'm going to show you how that can add sustain to it and then i'm going to show you the slow attack fast release so let's bring down our ratio to maybe 2 2.5 and start to bring down our threshold till we see some gain reduction happening all right, let's shoot for two to three dB of gain reduction, and we're gonna go for a longer release like this, quick attack, and then let's make sure that we bring our gain back up, so about 2.8. And now it's going to Edison, and let's record this. All right, so that's the first one, right? Now we're gonna go back over here, and we're going to do a slow attack, fast release. So 
So let's see about 1.8. Let's bring this down a little bit. Go back to 2.8 how we had it. 2.6 is fine because that's our output on the gain. And these will be outputted the same. So now let's record this. And let's bring these next to each other so we could really see what's going on with them. Let's say we wanted to bring this one up and level a little bit. So let's go over here to the amp and kind of bring it up so you could see they'd be the same. Okay, between these two waveforms, you could see that this one has a kind of consistent transient going on, right? Compared to this one. Look at the beginning transients of this one. This one is going to have more of a spike and then it kind of has a fade out, right? We have a bit of a higher transient going on right here, but this one is a consistent level that goes throughout. So you would know that this would have more sustain and it would feel like it has more bass because it's holding that loud level of those sub frequencies compared to over here that we have this one that kind of dips out and fades out. So this one's going to sound like it's like more of a boomy kick and it's holding out more. This one is going to kind of pierce through and pierce through the mix a bit more because it has more attack and more of a transi in the beginning of it. So let's just listen to both of them. You see how this one kind of hangs around for a little bit, right? And then this one's kind of more straight through. It's very, very small differences that we're listening for. So this is the cool thing about setting compressors is that if you have the difference of attack and release, this is kind of the things that will happen with doing it. You could shape transients. It's not only, you know, kind of a volume leveler and control, it's also a transient shaper when you're compressing, depending on how you're using the attack and release. So when it comes to compressing drums, it really depends on what you want to do with it. You can kind of beef a sound up or you can make something have more of a transient, more of a spiky, you know, quick release, not so long of sustain and a very high transient and spike in the beginning to make it punch through more or if you want it to sound like it has a longer sustain and more body to it or you want a snare that isn't so snappy but it's a really big body you can go with a faster attack and a long release and it'll kind of keep that sustain going and make it sound bigger so it just really depends on what you want to do with your drums and how you want to compress them but these two as you could see are almost leveled the same pretty much but you see just by doing different compression settings you could look at left and look at right and really see the difference of what that compressor does did with those different settings. So like I said, if you want to learn more about compression, I do have a video where I go really deep into what exactly a compressor does. But today's video, I kind of just wanted to show you how a compressor can affect a kick drum. For instance, if you guys want to see more videos on compression, drop comments down below and I'll compress different things like snares, or I could show you for like melodies, vocals, strings, whatever it is that you want to see, just drop a comment down below and I'll make sure to cover it. If you guys did like this video, leave a thumbs up. You can follow me on all social medias at lifestyle did it. Make sure to hit my site lifestyle did it dot com for everything else other than that subscribe to your boy push notifications thanks